right. Bubba Toe. Shalom Alechem. This is Mikael again. Early in the morning. Kind of taking some suggestions of pulling over, so to speak, and uh, providing some insight on this particular form. But of course, I want to give all praise to the Most High. For once again, opening my eyes and uh, allow me to come back to the land of life for giving um, health and strength and a sound mind. So, um, yeah, today is April 24th, uh, 2014, but I say 1900, no, not at all. But this is, um, I'll be 24, 59, uh, want to continue in the, uh, spirit that I've been going on with the, uh, exposure of some fallacious matters um, today is going to be interesting because a lot of people are always asking me why are you always exposing Christianity you know Christianity you're always bashing Christianity and it's not so much bashing you know it's really um, exposing you know and so I want to be fair today <laughs> and cover all the bases in a brief teaching today and what I want to do is is take the context of Revelation 16 uh, looking at verses 13 uh, through 14 and somewhat bring it all together for the basis covering the basis um, and so and the 13th verse of Revelation 16, it reads, And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits as frogs. For they are spirits of demons, doing signs which go out to the sovereigns of the entire world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of Yah Almighty. And then you go down some, and you read uh, verse 19, um, connecting to what takes place as a result of this battle, um, that they're um, gathering them together to, of course, Armageddon, verse 16. But verse 19, it says, And the great city became divided into three parts, speaking of Jerusalem, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babel was remembered before Elohim to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and so uh, you have these three unclean spirits coming out of the mouth of uh, each of these creatures these the dragon the beast and the false prophet and they're spirits of demons and I think it's very important to highlight that and uh, we need to identify them um, and make sure that we know um, what is going on. Now, what's so interesting to note, and we've covered it for the most part already, about the beast, the fourth beast, and who the fourth beast is. That fourth beast, of course, is the Vatican. Or what is Vatican known as? Vatican is known as the Mother Church, the Great Mother Church. Vatican is the mother of Christendom, of Christianity. So, this unclean spirit for the beast and I think we can most simply identify this here um, as a result <clears throat> of uh, what we've already gone through the past two teachings as far uh, as um, the anti-messiah discerning and defining who that is Ooh, I'm sorry excuse me and then um, also um the fourth beast, you know, um, who the fourth beast is. And, and we've been clear to identify that is the Vatican through Rome, um, which sits on seven hills. Uh, Revelation 17 gives us a little more clear revelation of who that is in line with Revelation 13 and also Daniel 7 and uh, Daniel 2, I do believe, which talks about the dream Nebuchadnezzar had of the, of the, the great statue and its reality. Um, so we can arrive at the conclusion pretty firmly, according to scripture, that the mouth of the beast is the teachings of Christendom. OK, 
okay? So let's not just offend those who may identify as Christians with the truth. Let's also offend some other individuals uh, in hopes of getting them to repent, investigate what the matter is at hand truly and um, returning to the father's Torah and keeping his commandments. So uh, the dragon, who is the dragon? Well, let's let's identify the dragon first of all. Revelation 12, okay. Uh, Revelation 12 lets us know that um, verse 9 it says and the great dragon was thrown out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who leads all the world astray he was thrown to the earth and his messengers were thrown out with him okay so we can identify the dragon as Satan now the deep thing is let's go back to Genesis 3 and see what takes place there regarding this serpent or the dragon. Um, I'm actually using scripture today so we can kind of have some um, verification. Um, but this is chapter 3, verse 15. This is after, well, let's go back to 14. This is after um, the fall of Adam and Hawa. Eve was not the name of the woman in the garden. Her name was Hawa, which means mother of all life. Come from the word Chaya, to be in Hebrew. But the 14th verse of the third chapter says, And Yah Elohim said to the Nachash, or the serpent, the whisperer. Okay, so we're not thinking of a literal serpent. A lot of times people think it was a literal serpent. This is a, a description of the character. Uh, of an enchanter, of a of a of a whisperer, of someone who casts spells, okay, someone who was fork tongued and very crafty, as it is said of the serpent. But, but Yah Elohim said to Nachash or to the serpent, <clears throat> because you have done this, you are cursed more than all livestock and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you are to go and eat dust all the days of your life. Verse fifteen. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall crush your head and you shall crush his heel. So there's a couple of buzzwords there, right? Um, of course, he calls him livestock and every beast of the field. Now, when you read scripture, you have to understand that many times those phrases are used not in a literal meaning to call um, a beast of the field livestock but also to identify that with mankind who has beastly characteristics and that uh, by that I mean nothing more than not being domesticated but being wild and, and, and doing what is instinctual and, and having um, a very uh, um, carnal nature uh, carnal by carnal I mean just basic survival matters as far as you know reproduction and, and not really having control when I say reproduction just uh, sexual gratification to gratify one's desires by any means um, bloodthirst um, you have uh, lust of course and whatever else is associated with a, a beast of the field okay and livestock um, and on your belly you shall go uh, is not just speaking of how it literally slithers a serpent literally slithers but how one is really um, using subterfuge how one uses um, camouflage how one uses uh, very subtle tactics to achieve its goals and to be hidden in the underbrush and uh, to eat dust all the days of your life of course dust is a Another um, buzzword used to describe humans as man was taken from the dust of the earth and, and, and the seed of Abraham shall be as numerous as the dust of the earth. Um, dust being a symbol of mankind as well. And these are all symbolic um, types of um, idioms that are being used in the Hebraic mind. Um, and that's something that has to be understood as far as, you know, the idioms that are associated with this scripture a lot of times we're just trying to literally translate 
the, the, the words, but not really capturing the idioms that are present and pregnant within the text. So the serpent, more importantly, has a seed, a seed that is within it. Okay. And it is one that has extreme hostility, which is the definition of enmity between um, itself or its offspring and the offspring of the woman. Okay. Which, of course, we know. Is speaking of Israel, and, and, and you can best see this exemplified in Revelation 12 as well. And we're just kind of getting around to it um, with the first uh, three verses. And a great sign was seen in the heaven, a woman clad with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. And being pregnant, she cried out in labor pain, in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign was seen in the heaven and see a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. And his tail draws a third of the stars of the heaven and throws them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, this is an ongoing story. It's not just a one time isolated event. This is the this is pretty much from the. The murder of, of, of Habel or Abel, by Chayim, by Cain, to destroy the promised seed um, by the seed of the serpent. So this serpent seed has been present on earth really since uh, the times of uh, Adam and Chawa. Okay, so it, it has been an ongoing battle of, of, of attempting to prevent the birth of the Redeemer. Okay of the kinsman redeemer from the seed of Abraham, from the seed of Adam, from the seed of Sheth or Seth, from the seed of, of Yered, from the seed of, of Enoch, from the seed of Methuselah, and from the seed of Noah, and from the seed of Shem, and then on to the seed of Heber or Eber, and then on to the seed of, of Terah, to the seed of Abraham, to the seed of Isaac, to the seed of Jacob, to the seed of Yahuda, okay, or Judah. So all of these um Individuals who were their, their nemesis in those times were pretty much of the seed of the serpent. Now, let's kind of go back to Revelation again into the second chapter in the ninth verse of Revelation and see what this is really talking about. It says, see, I'm giving up those of the congregation of Shaitan who say they are Yehudim and are not, but lie. See, I am making them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Okay, so the deep thing here is that uh, these individuals who are claiming to be Yehudim but are not are actually, it says here, of the congregation or what we call the synagogue of Satan. Okay, and, and, and they're lying about their identity. And we're going to kind of uncover that a little more. But let's go ahead to the third chapter and look at that as well in the ninth verse. And that's actually the third chapter. So let's go back to the second chapter and ninth verse. It says, I know your works and pressure and poverty, yet you are rich. And the blasphemy of them are those who say they are Yehudim and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Okay, so again, we see this mentioned twice in two chapters, back to back chapters, both ninth verse. 2 9 and 3 9 would speak of those who claim to be Yehudim and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Uh, so let's kind of uncover this a little more. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter uh, 9 and verse 27. This is Noah um, providing both curses and blessings to his children. Uh, let's go back to verse 24, chapter 9, verse 24. This is after um, Ham saw his father naked and um, told his two brothers, and they went and covered him, Shem and Yefet, that is. But he went and he covered him. So uh, verse 24 says, Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. And he said, Cursed is Canaan. Let him become a servant of servants to his brothers. And this was already prophetically fulfilled. So this Hamatic curse that is supposedly used, and I'm kind of diverting from the path, but to come back, of course, 
But this Hamitic curse about all black skin being cursed because Ham was cursed. Ham was not cursed. Canaan was cursed. And this was just a generational curse that dealt with the labor of, of, of slavery that was actually experienced in the book of Judges when Israel went into the land and actually enslaved, or not enslaved. Well, they did enslave uh, the people of Canaan, not in the fact or to the point of dehumanizing them, but to actually enslaving them and making them um, have labor to uh, carry out for them. Um, so I want to make that clear, okay? Then you go and you read verse 26, and he said, Blessed be Yah, the Elohim of Shem, and let Canaan become his servant. And so we see that fulfilled again in the book of Judges, chapter 1 and verse 28. And then it says, Let Elohim enlarge Yephet, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan become his servant. Now, to enlarge Yephet is to, to, to spread him out, right? To, to cause his um, influence to grow. And but more importantly, he says, let him dwell in the tents of Shem. Okay, so we can think of that in two ways. One is to tents to understand the dwellings as far as the location of his land. So we can see that even today, so especially today, but also in the identity of one's tense is one covering one's identity, one's cultural, one's house, one, one's, um, you know, um, who he is and entirely who he is. And so we see Yefet dwelling in the tents of Shem. Now, who is Yefet? Um, you get to verse uh, chapter 10 and verse 2. The sons of Yefet are Gomer. Magog, Madai, Yewin, Tubal, Misha, Tiras. Okay, these are our Eurasian peoples. Gomer, of course, we know um, is in. Uh, I'm going to add some maps to this so you can see. But Gomer is up in the uh, southern parts of Europe near the Caucasus Mountains. Magog, as well, is uh, in the uh, Caucasus region. Madai is the Persian region. Yewin is the Grecian region. Tubal, Mishak, Tiras, these are all Turkish as well in their areas. Now, verse 3 is very crucial. It says, And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. The first son of Gomer is Ashkenaz. And Rifta and Togarma. Okay, now I'm just going to stop there because that's where the, the smoking gun is found in this evidence. Ashkenaz, the son of Gomer. Okay. Ashkenaz is actually what these European Jews call themselves. And I don't mean to be in a negative sense because there are very, very um, righteous, upright, um, Torah loving and embracing Ashkenazic Jews who have converted and have embraced this cultural heritage of Israel and, and, and are um, more than likely, I won't even say more than likely, they will be in the kingdom. They will be in the kingdom, but they have to also understand who the children of Israel are. But there are also some other seeds, uh, particularly uh, when I say Zionists, the secular Zionists who actually are in control of the land of Canaan or what, what some call Palestine and Israel are, are doing now. These are who are the synagogue of Satan. These are um, this is uh, the mouth of the dragon. OK. This is the demonic spirit that is present with it. This is the Kabbalistic black magic uh, casting uh, religious and secular uh, Ashkenazic Jews that are very prominent right now in the land. And so um, you see how even on Zion, uh, the great city, there is a, a Jewish quarter. There is a Christian quarter. And then you have to really put two and two together to understand the third uh, player in the, in, the, in the scheme of this thing, who that is. And of course, you have an Islamic or a Muslim quarter, and that would qualify the leader of the Muslim world, who is Muhammad, as what Revelation 16 identifies as the false prophet. And so this is how you have to see this all unfolding. And as we are seeing um, the, the so-called peace treaty 
being established between Israel and the Palestinians or the Zionists and the Palestinians right now um, and the Pope coming to play the mediator of the matter and you see John Kerry over there you see Obama involved in it I mean you have some very crucial developments taking place right now and 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 we have to really put the pieces of the puzzle together in order to see clearly what is unfolding before our very face I mean this is very prophetic um, this is going to be a very um, intense matter that is going to concentrate all peoples all nations uh, all the the militaries in the world around uh, Jerusalem okay and this is uh, what is taking place what you see in Crimea right now Crimea and uh, Kiev and Ukraine is actually where the Ashkenaz uh, the seat of Ashkenaz comes from so it's very interesting that this spirit is being stirred up right now and of course we're seeing what's going on in Syria we see what's going on in Israel and even on the Temple Mount um, a lot of um, uprising going on in that area as well uh, and so um, all these pieces are coming together but we have to understand is that this is all being stirred up by these three unclean spirits by these three spirits of demons the the three world monotheistic religions the organized um, expression of them okay so I'm speaking of the organized institutions of Judaism the organized institutions of of, of Christendom and the organized institutions of Islam which are all being used to gather the kings of the world to battle okay so this is what we have to see these three religions um, two of them more so have been the the, the epicenters of more wars than any and, and, and the thing about the Zionists you have to understand they were crucial in funding many of these wars so they're the kind of a, a hidden hand behind it because the monies to cause these wars to carry out have been um, put up by individuals like the Rothschilds um, and individuals like the Warburgs and the Habsburgs okay so these are families that are knee deep neck deep in money forehead deep in money um, and and have profited largely off of the wars that have taken place okay and profited greatly off of these wars and so you have again the the dragon which is uh, uh, Zionist Judaism Talmudic Judaism you have uh, the false uh, the beast which is Christendom and you have the false prophet which is Islam and these three unclean spirits are, are very much causing all the mayhem that we know in the world today and uh, it's, it's, it's really intense when you examine it um, and this is all part of the mystery Babylonian system because whether we know it or not these three are in bed together uh, and you can see in Revelation 17 how this is uh, going on uh, let's see just go to Revelation 17 this is going to pretty much wrap it up and, and and the one behind it all right now again is the fourth beast the fourth beast is the one behind all of it okay so Revelation 17 says uh, starting at the first verse it says uh, and one of the seven messengers who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me saying to me come I shall show you the judgment of the great whore sitting on many waters with whom the sovereigns of the earth committed whoring and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her whoring and he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast covered with names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls holding in her hand a golden cup filled with abominations and the filthiness of her whoring and upon her head her forehead a name written a secret babel the great the mother of the whores and of the abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunk with the blood of the set apart ones and with the blood of the witness the witnesses of Yehoshua. and having seen her i marveled greatly marveled 
And the messenger said to me, Why did you marvel? Let me explain to you the secret of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the pit of the deep and goes to destruction. And those dwelling on the earth, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, shall marvel when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind having wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and the seven there are seven sovereigns, five have fallen, and one is, and the other has yet to, has not yet come, and when he comes he has to remain a little while, and the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth, and is of the seven, and goes to destruction. And the ten horns which you saw are ten sovereigns who have not yet received a reign, but receive authority as sovereigns with the beast for one hour. They have one mind, and they shall give their power and authority to the beast. They shall fight with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is master of masters and sovereign of sovereigns, and those who with them are called and chosen and trustworthy. And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the horse sits are peoples and crowds and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, they shall hate the whore, and lay her waste and naked, and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. But Elohim did give it into their hearts to do his mind, to be of one mind, and to give their reign to the beast until the words of Elohim shall be accomplished. And the woman you saw is that great city having sovereignty over the sovereigns of the earth. Okay, so this is kind of wrapping the mystery all together. And so we have to really examine this. And one of the keys in that is, is looking at what they describe waters as, as peoples and tribes and crowds and nations and tongues okay so that is letting you know again this is a, a apocalyptic language that is used throughout scripture particularly in the book of revelation the book of daniel the book of ezekiel um even somewhat in the book of isaiah <clears throat> but this is an apocalyptic language in which the idioms are being used to to um make the mystery um only revealed to those who have eyes to hear eyes to see and ears to hear so again, false prophet, the beast and the dragon, Islam, Christendom, and Judaism. Okay, so let's be clear about that um, and, and be very diligent in our research and, and unable to really um, uncover these mysteries in this time that we're in, in which Yah is truly showing wonders and revealing mysteries to his chosen um, for those who serve and obey him and keep his commandments and that is the, the imperative key to receiving the information and the revelation of this matter is obeying him and keeping his commandments this is observing his seventh day sabbath this is observing his holy day sabbath his feast day sabbath and this is of course keeping and loving um, the most high with all your heart soul and strength his commandments keeping his commandments and loving him and then loving your neighbor as yourself and so with that um I pray that all things that are revealed unto you are in spirit and truth. I pray that you continue to continue um, searching for your um, revelation that the Father will give you. And that, um, you know, all things work together for the good to those who love the Most High. So with that, may Yah bless you and keep you. May Yah cause His countenance to shine upon you and be kind unto you. May Yah lift up His face unto you and give you peace. One love. Shalom Aleichem.